Good morning, my name is Josh from Cycle and Souls, and today we're going to be talking about an upper level trough, which is currently delivering some very heavy rainfall to New South Wales and is expected to enhance uh, rainfall patterns for Sydney right down the New South Wales coastline and then further north up towards the Gold Coast over the coming couple of days. In short, it's going to be a wet weekend into early next week for a lot of New South Wales with up to 200 millimetres on the forecast for some locations. Before we go any further, please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it and leave a comment and leaving a detailed weather report for your location in the comment section down below. We're going to start things off talking about this upper level trough before talking about other weather happenings around the nation. You can already start to see some pretty swirly cloud features across New South Wales. Currently the low pressure system situated between Broken Hill and Coba, moving steadily towards the east and is expected to move further towards the east and impact areas such as Sydney throughout this afternoon and into this evening and then really picking up the rainfall uh, by tomorrow morning where we could be seeing up to 200 100 millimeters fall for parts of Sydney. But you can already see it looks like some thick cloud is moving through the Sydney area and also into parts of the Blue Mountains and even as far south as Victoria as a result of these uh, cloud, uh, rain and thunderstorm bands that are really starting to fire up around this low pressure system and as such the rainfall is already well underway for a lot of areas. And if we were to take a look at the latest radar imagery over the last six hours, you can see a lot of rainfall, a lot of consistent moderate to heavy rainfall falling in central New South Wales and a couple of heavy showers around the coastlines of Sydney down towards Wollongong and as far south as Jervis Bay by the looks of things. Uh, they're only going to be picking up throughout the course of today and in fact are already starting to pick up as we enter the afternoon hours. But for uh, New South Wales, we've got that consistent moderate to heavy rainfall across a lot of the central eastern parts of the agricultural areas and some of this rainfall is starting to get onto the side of heavy. We're talking about rainfall accumulations approaching uh, 20 millimetres every hour for some locations here, but it will will still continue to be moderate rainfall over the next 10 hours, averaging around five to seven millimeters per hour. And for some locations, as I said, it could be a little bit heavier uh, with uh, some thunderstorms moving through. But yeah, it looks like a pretty good day for the agricultural districts in central New South Wales. They're going to be picking up a very healthy amount of rainfall, especially areas around uh, Griffith, Coba, uh, inland towards Orange, Tamworth, up towards Lightning Ridge and so forth. There's going to be some pretty good rainfall accumulations. Nothing obscene where we're talking 100 millimetres plus, but a lot of places will be picking between 50 and 70 millimetres, and that is just perfect rainfall accumulations over 12 hours to really get things saturated, get the grounds wet nicely. Um, uh, yeah, really start farming season 2024 off quite nicely, which is some great news for central New South Wales because they really do need it. They've had a rough couple of years inland and it looks like it's going to be a nice 24 hours in terms of rainfall. Yeah, widespread 40 millimetres plus. In fact, some areas threatening 50 to 55 millimetres and that's on top of the 10 to 15 millimetres that fell across a lot of these areas over the course of last night. Over the next three days, the rainfall will uh, really start to pipe up around Sydney, Wollongong, Newcastle, and then up towards Coffs Harbour as well. This low pressure system will be moving closer to the coastline and the rainfall will really start to enhance there from this evening. And then into early tomorrow morning, it looks like it's going to be quite a wet morning and into early afternoon across parts of the New South Wales coastline. A lot of heavy showers will be in the vicinity there. And we could be talking about rainfall accumulations or one hourly rainfall accumulations around 40 millimetres and then 24 hourly accumulations accumulations up towards 150 millimetres. So certainly going to be severe weather warnings for heavy rainfall in place as a result of this weather system, which will likely continue right in towards Monday morning before easing off by Monday afternoon and just turning into showery crap, which will hopefully ease off Tuesday, but no guarantees that it will ease off on Tuesday. Normally with an event like this, we're also talking about the threat of big time damaging winds, but that's not so much the case here. In fact, it's going to be quite still in comparison to other fronts that uh, behave uh, in such a manner. We're really only talking about maximum wind gusts towards 30 knots. It's 55 kilometers an hour, so uh, really not going to be that strong um, in terms of peak wind speeds as a result of this weather system. Maybe on Monday they'll start to get a little bit gustier but they will only be gusty briefly um until they head inland where we could be talking about wind gusts approaching 70 kilometers an hour there but it should be relatively clear so it is quite an odd weather system it's not um 
conventional in the sense where we're expecting sort of this driving amount of rainfall and destructive winds, but we are expecting more sort of speckly shower, but very condensed shower activity where we're talking about a lot of showers moving through certain locations in very quick succession. In fact, it is more reminiscent of what central Queensland or far north Queensland would actually get. And it's all because of this upper level trough, which is a big ball of moisture heading across New South Wales, promoting thunderstorm and shower activity right up towards the coastline, which will then turn into a low pressure system north of Lord Howe Island and continue that driving wind and rainfall pattern over the next week of through Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, hopefully easing off by Thursday though. With the uh, threat of big winds also come the threat of big waves and we we're talking about wave heights probably up towards three metres. So again, nothing crazy but coastal conditions around the Sydney area especially between Sydney up towards I would say Taree, we're talking about hazardous uh, coastal conditions through here. So it's certainly uh, wise to stay away from the water. Don't go fishing, don't go surfing, especially if you are inexperienced because uh, the conditions will be quite hazardous, that's for sure, over uh, early next week, especially Sunday evening through to about Tuesday morning when they'll hopefully ease off. Once again, though, it is nothing in comparison to what uh, some of these East Coast lows can bring where we're talking about six or seven metre high waves. Yeah, we're definitely not talking about anything as extreme as that. Now, we should talk about rainfall accumulation as well. Over the next three days, we're talking about peak rainfall accumulations on the New South Wales coastline approaching 90 or 100 millimetres. I feel that that is a little bit on the lower side. I do definitely reckon that there's going to be one or two places, especially between Sydney down towards Jervis Bay, which I'm calling the wet zone at this point, that will pick up up to 150 millimetres of rainfall. We're just going to have to wait and see. But then again, any rainfall above 100 millimetres definitely has a chance to cause some pretty significant flooding in this area, considering it is already a saturated part of New South Wales with some very heavy rainfall falling about a month ago. It looks like they're in for a second round of it. In terms of rainfall over the next 10 days, though, it doesn't look like there's going to be an awful lot on top of it. There's still the chance of some heavy rainfall right through to about Tuesday, but it looks like the bulk of it is going to be falling uh, this evening and towards Sunday uh, and clearing off by about Sunday afternoon into Monday morning. So again, again, we're just going to have to wait and see and really wait and see what the details iron out to be as per the radar imagery. The Access G3 actually calling for about 150 millimetres of rainfall or 130 millimetres of rainfall or so to fall on top of Wollongong by the looks of things. But again, the Axis generally is the overestimator of all of these models. And I also don't like the fact that the Axis G3 is very uncertain with only 10 millimetres falling in Camden, which isn't too far away from the Sydney Metro, expecting 80 millimetres, which is not how these weather systems behave. Normally, it's just pretty consistent, moderate to heavy rainfall that's moving through. So if one place gets wet, then basically everywhere in a 50 kilometre radius will also get significantly wet too. Um, in terms of thunderstorm and severe thunderstorm activity, I'm not expecting anything interesting on that front. In fact, nothing worth talking about there. Uh, so yeah, that basically does it for the New South Wales upper level trough situation. There's some rainfall expected throughout the course of today for central Queensland as well, the central Queensland coastline. Uh, we could be seeing, in fact, quite a significant amount of rainfall fall there, up to 50 millimetres or so throughout the remainder of today, uh, which will happen over the coming couple of hours. But again, Nothing too crazy there. There are some pretty strong winds, however, occurring around Bundaberg, Gladstone, Agnes Water, up towards Rockhampton as well. And even as far north as Mackay, where we're talking about wind gusts up towards 50 or 60 kilometres an hour. So again, stay safe if you are in and around the water up there. This week, we also have on the cards a potential for a tropical low. Now, I'm not sold on this situation, and it really pains me to talk about it over and over again, but it looks like Wednesday is kind of going to be D-Day for this tropical low to really form around uh, New Guinea on the Indonesian side of New Guinea, and again, Wednesday through to Thursday, it kind of just manoeuvres itself around uh, the Indonesian waters in the northern extremities of the Arafura Sea. It isn't a threat to Australia at this point, but considering its proximity, there's always the chance of some rainfall being thrown ashore we could be talking about some uh, decent rainfall accumulations actually for this time of the year across Arnhem Land, but again, chances for that are relatively slim at this time. We're not expecting uh, catastrophic rainfall accumulations, and when I say significant accumulations, I'm really only mean about 15 to 25 millimetres, uh, which for this time of the year is pretty high, but again, uh, we could be talking about some 
thunderstorms here and there. Again, we're just going to have to wait and see on this weather event. Uh, really good congruency between the ECM BF, the GFS, and also the Access G3 model. So I'm pretty confident in saying that this is uh, going to be a pretty easy event to forecast. Although what has caught my eyes, the GFS doing some clown stuff by uh, Monday the 13th of May and calling for it to be a fully blown tropical cyclone moving past Melville Island. I don't think that this is going to happen and I'm just going to write the GFS off here as being crazy. There is a slim chance of it happening, of course, and if it is again on the forecast models by tomorrow morning, then it's definitely going to be something worth talking about in greater detail, but it's just such a weird track for a tropical low to be taking at this time of the year, and considering we've been talking about this system forming for the past two weeks now, and it hasn't already been, I'm really not sure what this system is going to be doing, um, and my better judgment says that this is not going to be uh, something happening, and definitely not going to be a threat to the Australian main land if it does happen uh, beyond a couple of gusty showers for the Darwin area but <clears throat> again they are used to some gusty showers up there from the uh, outer bands of tropical cyclones. The GFS now back on board with the Philippine Sea System as well so that's interesting that's also what's probably driving this activity through here. There's going to be more coverage on the Cyclones Extra channel so make sure you are subscribed to that channel as well nearing 200 subscribers there. Uh, it looks like it could be a powerful typhoon going for the Philippines but again 10 days out we're going to have to wait and see. The GFS very rarely gets things wrong 10 days out in the Philippine Sea though this time of the year so it is definitely worth a watch. In terms of other interesting weather happening around Australia it's that time of the year where we start to see some snowfall occurring quite consistently and frequently across Tasmania and uh, some parts of the highlands in New South Wales but absolutely nothing radio silence on the snow forecast at this time. I would actually like to flick back to the satellite imagery and just talk about this cold front down here south of Western Australia. It looks incredible a perfect swirl, very, very photogenic, and it looks quite nasty, that's for sure. So quite interesting that we're seeing this uh, this time of the year. It's pretty common, actually, where we see these swirly uh, extratropical cyclone activities, very much disconnected from uh, the roaring 40s trade belt. Uh, but again, it does look like a pretty photogenic system, and it looks quite nasty as well. And it's very, very lucky that this isn't actually impacting the Australian mainland directly, because it would have some pretty gnarly wind gusts in it, although it does look like it's going to be diving north and delivering a little bit of rainfall uh, and so forth to the uh, West Australian, the south coastal sort of region between Albany and S over the coming couple of days. It's a wet picture for central Queensland uh, too as well over the coming couple of days. Oh no, actually it's long range forecast. We're expecting this rainfall probably around next Thursday and so there could be a little bit of rainfall occurring over central Queensland in towards Roma, Charleville uh, and then over towards Toowoomba as well from another upper level trough but we'll just have to wait and see on that one. That is about a week away at this point. So yeah, it does look like some healthy rainfall accumulations for New South Wales and Queensland too. Um, but apart from that, nothing too interesting happening around the Australian weather scene at this time. I'd like to give a special shout out to the channel sponsors for supporting this video. Their names are on screen right now. And thank you so much for watching these updates every single day to all of my subscribers and supporters. The support really does mean a lot. Um, we're going to be releasing or continuing with the daily updates. We might switch to every second day, especially if things aren't happening. And I'm going to show the second channel a bit of love as we get into cyclone season because I've realized that the majority of the audience is here for cyclone coverage. Uh, so I'm going to be switching things up and not delivering too much on the Australian weather scene unless something very interesting is happening. But I could talk about showers all day, but showers are not a threat or an impact. But yeah, if you've got anything that you'd like me to talk about in depth as well, if you want to give me an in-depth for, uh, weather forecast for your specific location, I'd be more than happy to do that as well. But anyways, that is all from me and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.